If you want to be able to build this in Planet Zoo, then stick with me with my updated 2022 7 episode tutorial series. In this series we are going to cover the basic controls, landscaping, pathing, barriers, building, foliage and enrichment. And since many things have changed since 2019 when my last tutorial have been online, here's a brand new series you can build along. The park is available to download, but now let's begin. Alright, welcome to the first episode of my tutorial series. In today's video, we are going to cover the basic controls. So we are going to setting up the park in which we are going to build this entire tutorial and I'm gonna guide you through the entire menus, the tools and everything that you need to know to master Planet Zoo. So this is the main menu with which you are going to be greeted once you boot up Planet Zoo. Now in this case you've got a couple of uh, menu items to the left hand side, we're just going to go quickly through them. For those of you who are already masters, you can just skip ahead to the next couple of things if you're gonna find some things that you may have not known. But for those of you who are new, this is the main menu and you've got a couple of options. You've got the resume button so if you've played already then you're gonna click on here and it straight brings you back to the last game that you've played to back mostly to your autosave. Then you've got the career in which you can play the career with a couple of steps. You've got the franchise mode which is the online kind of challenge mode if you will. You've got the timed scenarios which is basically taking some of the career scenarios and making them a time challenge so you've got a given time frame in which you can do something. You've got the challenge which is basically franchise just offline so you can play for yourself. You've got sandbox mode, which is obviously is my biggest uh, pleasure to do. And we've got my zoos. And if you click on that one, it's going to bring you to all of your zoos in one menu. Just going back by clicking escape brings you back to the main menu. You've got a couple of uh, settings to the top right hand side where you can adjust the settings. Then this window pops up, but you're going to have this available throughout the entire experience via this menu. You've got the credits and you can quit playing the zoo, but we totally don't want to do this right now. So. Next up is creating a new zoo. We are going to do a sandbox mode. We are going to create a new zoo down here. And then this brings up the sandbox menu in which you can select the biome first. We're going to go straight up with the temperate one. And we are going to say it's going to be in Europe. Pretty simple. And then you've got a couple of info down here. You can choose what type of difficulty because you can actually play sandbox with difficulty if you want. Uh, for us it doesn't matter because we will play this in the normal mode. Then you can choose your terrain mode. You can either go with one of the example things and even load in your own height map or you go random if you want. We're gonna keep it flat because we want to start from scratch and we're gonna call this tutorial 2022 and now we are just going to create the zoo and we see each other back in the zoo. All right, after the loading screen, you are going to be greeted with this wonderful green canvas in front of you. Now I'm zooming out. This is the park you can play in. If you are um, suited with eagle eyes, you might see a very thin um, line down here. This is where the park borders are in which you can build. So it's quite a ridiculously big one if you ask me. And you can do several things, but first of all, we're going to pause the game over here in order to stop the sun from moving because we are going to go through all of the settings in your bottom part of the screen, first of all. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, so on the left hand side, you've got a toggle for your heat maps. If you toggle these on, you've got a couple of heat maps that are going to be brought up to the top of your screen. We are not going to talk about them quite yet because we need to do certain things, first of all. Then you've got your zoom menu on the left hand side pretty much opens up a big menu so just to give you a brief overview on the left hand side you've got all your toggles for the different areas of your zoo you've got the overview in which you can set basically the time of days how many the ticket price show how much the ticket price should be you can see your latest reportings of the inspection your reputation your most valuable animal and all kind of things you can show this as a graph you can have an overview of your guest stats which become very important if you play friends franchise and you can also check your crime ratings and then basically also replace everything from one area basically i just found out about this just by preparing this tutorial video so i forgot about this two and a half years how cool is that now a couple of things you can change in here now if you go down you've got your finances you've got your animals you've got your staff you've got your facilities you've got your education you've got your transport you've got your memorials if animals die and you connect them to memorials which is something we'll come to in a later episode then you're gonna find them over here and then you've also the audiovisual things when you've got some speakers and stuff you can manage them from all over here 
It doesn't make too much sense if I talk you through every single detail, but just know that in this menu down here in Zoo, you're going to find everything you need. If you're wondering why there are certain things grayed out at the moment, this is because we will need some buildings. So before going on, I'm gonna set up a little building area down here just to have these buildings down. So we are not going to spend too much time on that. And just building the pathway a little bit straight up here and the two buildings that you will need at the very beginning to have all the options available are basically it's three buildings these three buildings are i'm just going to say them uh, right in front of you this is going to be the trade center this is the most interesting one because without the trade center you won't get any animals you've got the research center small and you've got the workshop for our wonderful where's the workshop there's the workshop this is the one for the mechanic and now you've got everything unlocked because now you can use everything. Now, um, the uh, research center is for your vet research. In here, you can research all the animals. In the sandbox, everything is re researched by default. In the mechanic area, you can research some scenery items and also kind of other facility items and shop fronts and whatnot. And again, in the sandbox mode, it is researched by default, so you don't need to care about that. But going on in the menu, two new buttons have appeared. Before we talk about them, let's quickly talk about these info bubbles down here. You've got the unlimited sign over here. This is usually where you have your money. This is usually where you have your conservation credits. Conservation credits are basically um, points or money points, if you will, for which you can also buy animals. Um, the better you run your zoo, the more conservation credits you'll earn. You You'll earn also conservation credits from releasing animals to the wild or from trading them with other players and the better your animals are taken care of the better the stats are and the better the stats are the more conservation credits you get and the more you have from them you can invest them to get more rare animals for example pretty hands-on then you've got the amount of guests you've got the amount of stars and reputation your zoo has and also a quick toggle on how happy your people are um, depending on or split down into several little areas as you can see energy hunger thirst toilet and education obviously is a big thing in a zoo as well and then we come to the big ones this is the animal trading tab in the animal trading tab you will basically be able to trade all of the habitat animals so all animals that go into a habitat are found over here and you can search for any uh, thing you want over here so i'm going to put a leopard and then you can say it tells you the amur um, leopard the clouded leopard or the snow leopard and uh, this is pretty good that we have the easy search for function and we can just use that in the exhibit it's basically exactly the same it functions exactly the same and this is only for exhibit animals and you can do the same just type in frog and it's going to bring up all the frogs you need Okay, this is done. Now the left hand side has been mostly done, but before we jump over to the main area of uh, interest, we are going to do the left top side. So on the left top side, you've got a help menu and it's pretty handy because in this help menu, you can type in whatever you want. And I say conservation credits, and then it brings up a little explanation, maybe even better than I have done of the conservation credits. So in case you have a question, you can always type them in up there. Then you've got the big Zoopedia in which you can find out everything about an animal up front, which is pretty cool. So you can also filter now by region if you want, and then it's also bringing you down the region, but you can also filter by um, extinct in the wild and you can see we only have one animal in the game at the moment that is extinct in the wild but we also have some more critically endangered ones as you can see and then you can also you know make your zoo uh, work according to that if you wish then we have another toggle which is the timeline but there is no timeline at the moment because there are no tasks or whatever so we don't have any and this over here is when there's an inspection uh, inspection happening you can find what they're inspecting at this point and then we've got our very annoying notifications that tells us what is going wrong in your zoo um, you can also dismiss them if you don't care about them just as I do right now they're gone a boom that easy okay now before we go into the middle I'm very sorry I know I'm, I'm a little bit teasy here but before we go into the middle which is the most important part we go to the right hand side because that's quickly done as well now you've got a multi select tool which with which you can multi select buildings for example over here we selected those three as one you can just click away uh, wherever you want just click um, and if you want to you know just select them one by one you select the second one now you can just do this and boom it has all the objects if you have more objects you have to click multiple times like so 
you know, just showing you with the trees. Again, click away with the right hand side or just dismiss that. It's all gone. Now down there, you've got the play control. You can hit P for pause or you can speed up the game if you want, wish to. You can also use the hotkey O. If you press O, it's gonna speed up your game as well. You've got the info what time it is and also what date it is. If you hover over this, you're gonna get the time. Pretty handy. If you click on that, it brings up the time and weather condition menu, which is pretty cool because down here we can change the weather to our liking which you can't do obviously in any other of the management modes because that's part of the challenge and you can also slide uh, the sun direction which is pretty handy for making screenshots and also for finding out where your perfect lighting is for whatever you want to build pretty handy indeed this gives you the weather weather information that you just set we set to snow so it's going to change to snow right now but since we just click away if i hit play for a second it's going to change in a couple seconds now but this shouldn't be anything we should worry about then we also have some uh, cool camera modes so at the moment we are in the free look mode which means we are hovering around the camera so we are basically the point of rotation if you want a standard mode which is more likely the uh, typical 3d management game mode just click that one and now we do rotate around the point you are clicking your mouse and holding so you are basically rotating around a certain object in the center if you favor that you can do this but if you want to run around in your zoo you can use the explore mode you see that little blueish kind of outline which shows you where you're going to be dropped down so we are just going to be dropped down here and boom, there you go. You just stand down in a zoo. How easy is that? Now you can run around, use your uh, keys WASD, pretty much as you know that. You can even use shift to sprint, or you can use control to go very slow. You can use Q to just, uh, you know, go down and crouch. You can use E to stand up a little bit, and you can press E again to be a very big person if you wish to. And you can also use your mouse wheel to zoom in, which is kind of cool to just kind of make some tours with a cooler little angle now here just have a little sneaky peek into one of the buildings pretty cool as well and if you want to leave this mode you can just go down to the camera again and go back into free mode and boom we are flying around all of a sudden again last but not least there is a camera filter option and you can set on some camera effects you can have the camera light activated which you can't see right now i'm just going to quickly show you making it nighttime and then you can just say camera light and now everything you're going to go to has some light very interesting to build in caves and also at night if you don't have the chance to set the light obviously for example in challenge mode or in the career you can use this um, but since we don't need that we can bring it back to daytime and then you have got some more effects you've got a uh, vignette if you want you can apply or disapply so that's it and then you can also change it if you want the brightness you can change the midpoint look at that we are breathing <sighs> has been a very exhausting day. Now, you can also de-check that and you can go onto filters and I've got the night vision at this point, uh, which is kind of cool because if we make it night, you can see that it actually changes. And I love the fact that it's actually a night vision. It's not only a filter, it does actually work according to the sunlight and stuff. So that's a kind of cool filter. It's basically the only one I've used so far, but you can also have like a night vision full color, a night vision gray. You've got a tundra, tundra lush, desert warm and tiger breeze in case you want to have different things but you know we just keep that disabled for the moment and then you've got one of the most important keys down here is the redo and undo setting which you can also do with ctrl z and ctrl y or ctrl z and ctrl y and it brings away what you've done and you can undo or redo things again for people that build in a game this is superbly important now with all the little things that you need sometimes uh you know done we are now coming into this what you will use all the time now these six menus down here are the most important ones you're gonna need in planet zoo so the first one going to be the barrier menu and to be not too crazy detailed i'm going to explain this kind of window over here once because all the other ones will be pretty much the same i will just highlight some elements of them so in every menu of these six you're going to brought up with this uh, lower bar in which everything is in here you can even take that bar and drag it up on down according to your liking this half screen is the maximum height but you can also drag it down a little bit more if you want you can adjust that as much as you want i'm also trying to 
bring it as much as I can to the lower side of things because then I have more space to see what I do. On the left hand side you've got subcategories, on the middle screen normally you've got a search bar which we'll talk about later and on the right hand side you've got always the settings of your item. So whatever you do in Planet Zoo, on the left hand side you've got the item that you choose. So for example we choose the concrete barrier over here and I can change certain things here to the right hand side. I want to say okay you know what I do want to have this one being angle snapped if I build this and the angle should be 24 degrees while the length of the piece should be 10 meters or 9 meters and if I do this you can see now we've got 9 meters set if I do increase the length you can see on screen it does increase the length I can also change certain things I can say it should have a curved barrier top and now if I do certain things you can see how the barrier is having some curves to it and I can also say it should do height snapping and then I should go to a different height and then it will just uh, align the height next time around and so this is what you can do with this menu. And so with these settings you can always adjust the piece that you have in the game. So that's that with your barriers and if you want to filter by just having gates and by just having barriers you can always use the two but you know you can always hit all and then you've got every piece available. Now that's that about barriers. If we go to Habitat, you can see the menu looks fairly similar, but there are a couple of new items to the screen over here and they're very handy. On the left hand side, the same thing applies. Again, you've got different sub menus which you can click through and sometimes there's even another layer opening so if it has a second sub menu you can click through that one as well but it's everything is really straightforward and if you go back to all you've got everything in the screen now let's talk about this area in the middle so to the left hand side there's a little handy toggle if you do not want to see blueprints you can just click and disable them by saying blueprints off and then you can see it only shows you the pieces but if you are more casual and you just want to drop down some easy going blueprints Blueprints. You can also say I want to only see blueprints. So boom, let's do that. You got all the blueprints again That applies for all the menus now if you do want to go back to any just hit any and then you're good to go With this favorite thing you are going to be shown all the items that you actually set to be favorite I haven't had any but I can just show you I'm gonna highlight those two with a little heart icon to the time to the little piece and then I'm gonna click on the favorites and it's gonna be show me only those two which is pretty good because then you can also easily set yourself a little category speaking of which you can also do your own tags if you want you can see on the right hand side with your menu where you can change certain things there's also a tag menu and if you want to say so for example I want to have a custom tag and we're going to name this one create tag and we're going to say this um, test tutorial and I'm going to hit a couple of pieces so let's say that one as well so gonna apply a custom tag we're gonna say test tutorial gonna do the same with this one apply tag you can see it's always there there you go and now if you do this and you type in uh, test tutorial oops sorry that was my bad I wanted to go with the filters and then you've got my filters and there you go you can just sit test and then you get all your filters that's pretty handy and so you can easily filter all your different items speaking of filters that's already the filter how it should be and in this filter menu you can also filter various properties if you want so I'm gonna decheck that one and we have got the property filter which brings you a whole range of properties you can filter by you can also hit species and then it filters by the species you can hit theme and it's gonna hit this theme and it has the content pack and then you can click which content pack you have or if you only have the base game you can click the base game and it's only going to show you the base game items again a very handy filter scheme and um, of scheme and one thing that is even better is that most of the things you can just type in so for example if I want to have something for the seal for example I type in seal and it brings up all the items that have seal either in the name or are tagged seal which is pretty cool if you type in lion for example it's going to show you not only the west african lion but also the sea lion obviously because it has lion in the name if you want to have more of an appropriate one you're going to type in west african lion and then it brings up only the items related to the west african lion so that is a pretty cool thing and there is also a very handy one which i can't use because i got all the dlcs but if you don't have all the dlcs you can just hit that button and it's gonna toggle all 
all the items that you don't have for example sometimes you have downloaded maybe um, for example blueprints you can't use because they have a you know you can sh you can look at them but you can't use them because you don't have the DLC so then this one is very handy indeed now we talked a lot about that let's move on to nature because now I can just only tell you that in nature you've got all the same controls as you've seen in the previous two but this time around it's all nature down here so you can check your nature in facilities the same thing applies but you've got a couple more sub menus because there are a lot of different uh, items to be used and this is management wise more important you can click through the menus and it's going to show you which category you're in so for example if you want to have things for your guests you click guests and then this menu brings up all the facilities for your guests under construction you will find a whole range of pieces and basically all the different filters apply here again and you can just search for different menus and sub menus very handy indeed and i always recommend to turn off the blueprints because it gives you a better overview only in these you can also change from a small to a bigger view you can change those two and you can even um, have the sorting by type price recently added and descending which is pretty handy indeed because that makes a lot of sense when you for example build in challenge mode or in franchise mode you can also sort them by price and then you're going to see the the cheapest one uh, previously or if you go by type you're going to have the africa pack first and so on and so forth so you get the you get the idea um but beware if you got used to a certain um listing and sorting i wouldn't change it necessarily because then it it's going to confuse you, trust me. And last but not least, we've got the menu for the blueprints and the blueprints obviously are what you can use either from the shop workshop or from the game itself. And there are also some handy kind of menus for that. Either you have all the blueprints or you say my blueprints, these are the ones you created yourself, or you've got the one from the Steam Workshop, which is everything you downloaded from the Steam Workshop. It can also be your own ones. If you've downloaded your own ones, they are going to appear in here as well. Or you just say, no, I want to have only the in-game ones to also be sure of all the DLCs and stuff. You just click the prefabs and then you've got all the prefabs that Planet Zoo did for us, which are quite a lot by now. So um, they did a good job on that as well. Now, this is it, guys. This is the overview of all the different areas we have to the top right side. By the way, there is just like the settings, but we've looked at that already. And we've got a kind of sandbox setting mode where you can change some sandbox settings pretty quickly. But we are not going to go through all of these because there's just too much in there. But you will navigate yourself very easily through that because it's very obvious and you won't need that so often so just put your settings in once and then you're good to go i really really hope that this tutorial was helpful for you to understand the basic controls and the basic you know menus and stuff of planet zoo if it was helpful for you i'd be super happy if you guys would consider subscribing to the channel there are again six more episodes coming of this tutorial they are going to be released very much uh in the next couple days now so very much back to back so if you're interested keep your eyes on the channel there's a lot coming i've got a lot of new knowledge that moves into these so please make sure to stick with me um, and i'm going to try to make them as accessible for everyone as possible so it would be lovely if you could consider subscribing that would help me out a lot and now have a good time thank you so much and until the next one